Why do people waste the time believing in God? There's no way there is one. What fucking God would allow what happened to happen? God is good. Fuck off. <laughs> God is bollocks. It doesn't exist. All those people who spend all that fucking time giving their lives to him, they're fucking idiots. He's a tosser. A total tosser. We're fucking animals. That's what we are, simple as. Educated animals in clothes who live in houses and do TikTok. But we've still got animal instincts. We hunt in packs. We like the thrill of a kill. There's good in us and bad in us. Where you are, who you mix with and what happens to you. That's what makes you more good than bad, or more bad than good. I was good. But now I'm bad. Very bad. I'm glad he's gone. Like my mum and my sister. She wants to make the world a better place. Good luck with that. The fucking shithole. No one expected him to recover at all, let alone live for another five years. He was in hospital for a year after it happened. Three different hospitals before he came home. My mum gave up work to look after him. 24 hour care. He had permanent brain damage and paralysis. He couldn't walk or talk. He was trapped in his own body, unable to say what he was thinking and feeling. It was fucking torture. Must have been. Torture for him and torture for us. I was 19. Katie was 16. He was the best dad anyone's ever had. They both loved him to bits. So did my mum. Had to sleep in the living room when he came home. I couldn't have a bath or a shower. Not until Ken Hardy helped out. He was our saviour. Super. Super Ken. Super. Super Ken. Super. Super Ken. Super Ken if I day. That's what my mum and my sister used to sing. Got us an annex built, attached to the house. <laughs> Had a special bed, a wet room, everything my dad needed. My mum said Super Ken restored her faith in humanity. He was chairman of the club, <laughs> still is. September the 5th, six years ago, that's when it happened. I was meant to be there with him. I would have been if I wanted our mate's birthday getting off my face. But he went to the game, away game with Neil and Tomo. Travelled on the train, had a few pints on the way to the ground, then sung their hearts off for the lads. Wanted much of a game, 1 1. On the way back, they stopped at the Crown, not far from the station, for a couple more jars before the train home. 
didn't make the train. They were ambushed when they left the pub. A bunch of lads appeared out of nowhere and sat on them like a pack of wild animals. They knocked my dad to the ground and laid into him. Kicked him in the head again and again like it was a football. They stamped on him. Eight of them. Eight fucking subhuman scumbags on one helpless man. How brave is that, eh? Time. Time's supposed to heal. That's right, isn't it? Hasn't healed for me. I've had therapy, anger management, more than most people have in two lifetimes. I've got better, then worse, then better again. I've swallowed pills for England. It's still with me, though. Right fucking here. In the fucking heart of me. Every minute of every day, I can't get away from it. No matter how hard I try. My mum's back at work. She's pleased about that. I was doing her in, looking after my dad. Sending her to an early grave too. My nan died last year and all. Thanks for that. <laughs> you fucking fucker. Katie's at uni and I'm back home. In the house. I was with my girlfriend for a bit. But... I'm in my bedroom now, most of the time. On my PS4, just trying to get out of the world I'm in. My mum tried to get me to go to Australia. To spend time with my Uncle Kevin. I don't want to go to fucking Australia. The only place I want to go is somewhere where this didn't happen. I've given up on football. The beautiful game. Fuck off. Beautiful game cost my daddy's fucking life. They were hooligans, out for revenge. There'd been a punch up before we played them. And my dad wasn't involved. He's not a troublemaker. He's a football supporter. A proper football supporter. Goes to football to watch football. Not like them. He just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, supporting the wrong team. He had a massive stroke, heart failure. Took the paramedics seven minutes to resuscitate him. Neil and Tom all got done over too. Not like my dad though. Five years they got. Some of them. It's the most you can get for violent disorder. Some of them got less, they were out after three. Getting on with their lives as if nothing ever happened. One of them's been back for robbery in GBH. They served three poxy years. And we're serving a life sentence. Where's the fucking justice in that? Hey. Where's the fucking justice in that? Hey. The fucking law is useless. They should have locked up the bastards and chucked away the key. And my mum started a campaign last year. Rob's law. If someone's found guilty 
and sentenced for causing harm to another person, then some of their wages or benefits has to be paid to the NHS and the prison service for the rest of their bastard fucking lives because the bastards who did this haven't paid a penny. They don't pay my dad's NHS bill. They don't pay to be kept behind bars, we do. They do the damage and we cough up the fucking cash. It's a joke. A bad fucking joke. The worst fucking joke ever, it drives me fucking mental. It's the criminals who are laughing. <laughs> They're taking the fucking piss. What they did is the fucking pits. It's beyond unforgivable. But the injustice makes it worse. A million fucking times. Paul Jeffries. That's where he lives. He's one of the scumbags who played football with my dad's head. I fantasised about killing him and the others so many times in different ways. Jeffrey's laughed about it in court. Can't give a fuck. That's why I picked him over the others. He still had a dad. After he did what he did. So did his kids. They don't anymore. Not they're like me. I've lost my dad. I've lost my girlfriend. And my mum's got a new fella. I've got nothing. Worse than nothing. I've just got the pain. The agony. Yeah, I get it, it won't go away. <laughs> 